how do you refocus or be happy when you're struggling with depression? My first thought is always to raise your shield of faith and find a verse that you can claim. And for me, when I am feeling like darkness is surrounding me and my thoughts and I'm being attacked from every side, like I just can't get a breath of positivity anywhere in my mind, I go back to the verse, commit thy works unto the Lord and thy thoughts shall be established. Because, you know, God has promised that, you know, he hasn't given us the spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. And I'm just like, I can't grasp the sound mind at this point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on what I can do. And I can focus on my works and what I do every day. So our feelings and our thoughts can't be completely trusted. We do have to measure them against scripture to see if they're true and measure them against facts to see if they're true. But those daily tasks that you do, you just get up and you have a purpose. It's very difficult if you don't have a purpose, if you don't have a job that you do every day. But those daily tasks of get up, brush your teeth, <laughs> wash your face, take a walk, do your devotions, do your daily chores. And if we don't routinely do those maintenance things, then they become this huge mountain that just seems like this pile of laundry that we can't see through. Why do I even try? I'm a failure. I can't even do my laundry. But if we just set our feet on a path, and like Elizabeth Elliot said, do the next thing and commit your works into the Lord and say, God, help me to just take one step, one step forward. And very often it's that first step that is very difficult. Getting out of bed when you're in pain or when you're exhausted or when the thoughts just want to keep you there. Taking that first step is huge. Commit your works into the Lord and your thoughts shall be established. And I have just found that promise to be faithful over and over. So do, do the next right thing. Uh, number two, try to find the source of your depression. Very often the sources of our depression might not be what we think they are at you know, if you just sit there and say, what's wrong with me? Am I crazy? Why can I not get out of bed? Why do I not want to get out of bed? Why is it when my circumstances seem to be fine? Why am I just not happy? I have all of my needs met. What is wrong with me? And the first thing I point to is our health, our sleep, our hydration, nutritional deficiencies. I know that iron deficiencies cause depression. I know that um, certain sweeteners, aspartame, causes depression. So look at what you're eating and what you're not eating and what nutrition you're not getting and hormonal changes. Did you just in the past year have a baby? Did you have a traumatic birth and delivery? <laughs> Is there something that, uh, do you have auto autoimmune disorders? Do you fi find your joints are hurting and your hair is falling out and you don't know quite what's wrong with you and you're easily irritable and you're exhausted all the time. You have chronic pain, chronic allergies. Um, some allergies aren't just like runny noses. They're literally deeply hurt inside your body. And again, a lack of sleep, which often is a side effect of these health and wellness issues. And so it just compounds the struggle physically that you're going through. So any chronic physical issue needs to be looked into because a lot of times if we can fix those, get to the root of those problems, first of all, it will alleviate mentally, you know, that there's, you're not crazy. <laughs> and you can start working towards a path of recovery. The second thing are just stresses, mental stresses, post-traumatic stress triggers. Uh, those are huge. You just find like, oh, why am I suddenly feeling such anxiety? And, and stop and pause and recognize that that moment of anxiety is actually a gift to help you realize there's something in your surroundings that you need to acknowledge I might be afraid because 
this situation, closing this, somebody closed a door which made me feel captive and, and trapped. And acknowledging and taking time that it's okay to look and say, there's something wrong and my body's telling me there's something wrong. My spirit is saying there's something wrong and I need to get to the root of it. Sometimes it's perfectionism tendencies. And in that day, you realize, you know, something didn't go quite right. And, and I am overanalyzing it. My spirit isn't settled because this has happened. So I'm just going to read through or else I'm going to be here a long time. Chronic conflict marriage difficulties, unmet expectations, just in life in general, you're not where you thought you would be at this point in your life, mental, mental, physical, sexually abusive relationships and the trauma and how you relate to people. You know, you have this, you have a pair of glasses on and they're not rose colored. They're sometimes really, really dark and hazy because you see everybody through a light of mistrust and self-protection. So, um, and sometimes it's a work overload. Those are just physical stresses that can cause depression. And it's good to put a finger on what it is and to make a plan to work through it. The next thing are spiritual battles, church conflicts, friends, friendships and relationships that have gone bad, fiery darts of the devil. He's the accuser of the brethren. He accuses you to God. He accuses God to you and he accuses friend to friend, uh, bitterness that goes back to those conflicts, strongholds of sin in your life. You've been really battling something and you keep failing. And so sometimes you get give into it, those um, continual cycles of of failure and addictions can become depressing discouragements, the spirit of fear, the accuser of the brethren, and just long suffering. Any trauma or turmoil that has been going on for a long time creates that rise of adrenaline in your system and, and it drains you physically and it will literally change the chemicals in your brain and your body because your body hasn't had a release from this stress load and your body needs it. It's okay to have that adrenaline rush and the cortisol when you need it to deal with a circumstance. But if you're not acknowledging what the circumstance is, if you're not dealing with the circumstance, your body is going to break down and you will develop, develop chemical imbalances within you. And sometimes people take medication to deal with that in the short term. I'm not going to speak on that, but I'm just letting you know that physical changes happen within you when you don't deal with stresses. So where there is no vision that people perish, find someone, find someone to help you work through those, someone who has succeeded in those areas or who has um, experience to help you walk through a path. Number three, be aware that depression is cyclical. It's just like the creative cycle. You can literally document certain stages of the creative cycle. Same thing with depression, especially if you are prone towards a melancholy mind state, mind frame. <laughs> this is bandit. So what I just want to point out in this, if you are prone to depression, imagine that depression is a foggy road and you're driving through it and you're feeling a sense of nothingness. I can't see beyond. This is all I can see is the fog and the no nothingness and the darkness. And the last thing you want to do is pull over and park your car in a foggy spot because you're not going to get through it. But if you can just commit your works into the Lord and take one step at a time and, and follow this, the paths of figuring out what your root is and then working through those stresses, you'll get through the fog. And then you know what happens? It's a clear space for a while. And then just as life is, the next section of fog comes. But what happens when you have driven through the fog and worked through the fog, you realize, oh wait, here I am again. And you have two ways to look at this. I'm always going to come back to the fog. Why do I even try? I'm always gonna come back to the fog. Or, oh, 
here's the fog. I've worked through this before. I've gone through this path again. This is not, this is not a jail sentence. This is just a part of who I am that very often is part of melancholy, creative, very empathetic people, very purposeful, driven people. There's just, some are just prone to this fog and it's okay. Use it as a time to rest and regroup and refocus and recognize, hey, I'm one of many, many, many people who go through these cycles of fog and it's okay for me to rest and find a vision and just keep committing my works to the Lord. My thoughts will be established. And don't let it become your identity. Rather than I am a depressed person or I have depression, a better thing to say is I have a personality prone to cycles of depression and I will use it to help me have greater compassion for the hurting. It helps you to understand. It helps you to have empathy. And, and it truly can be a gift so long as you keep walking forward. Lastly, if every if you start getting this thought that everyone would be better off without me, I'm just a burden. I cyclically become discouraged and depressed and it's so low and it's so dark and I can't do my job well and, and it's impacting my relationships. Why am I, why am I even here? I'm not being productive. I'm not, a, I'm not investing anything in anybody. I barely can take care of myself. Those are the lies of the devil. And I know this because God is the giver and taker of life. And if he was through with you, if you didn't have a purpose, if your personality couldn't be used, he'd take you home. But as long as you are breathing, God has a purpose for you. And, you know, I think about Paul who said, you know, he would rather depart. He'd rather go to heaven, you know, seeking a country far better than this one, Hebrews 11. But he said, it's more needful for me to be here. And I think it's interesting that he had a thorn in the flesh that he went to God to three times. And God said, my grace is sufficient. And this depressive side of your personality might just be your thorn in the flesh. And it might be what keeps you needy for the Lord. And it might be the tool that helps you to break through to help somebody else. But God has a purpose for you. It is more needful for you to be here. And that brings me to Romans 12, 1, where it says, you know, we are to be a living sacrifice and we can't be a living sacrifice if we're dead. <laughs> I know that's pretty straightforward, but we can't. Sometimes the sacrifice is truly just living and saying, today I'm going to take a step and then another step. Oh, I don't want to cry. <laughs> Ask God today what would please him and commit that work to him today. And, uh, and that goes back full circle. Commit thy works unto the Lord. Thy thoughts shall be established.